All right, so I'm actually going to get rid of this curve right here and its bevel. This one I'm going to keep in the scene, and I'm going to show my axe here. I'm going to scale up the axe a little bit. I find it's a little easier to work with curves this way. Of course, the OCD student is like, how big? <laughs> right? You want to know exactly how big that was. It's going to bug you. Um, just big enough so it fits somewhere on the grid like this, maybe. So it's, it's not technical. It's just uh, a little bit bigger so the curve doesn't have to be so small and that the polygons don't have to be so small. It takes less time for me to zoom in and zoom out. All right, so I'm going to add a new curve here. Find out where that curve is. You notice now the curve, it, it's easy to manipulate. It's already the size that I need it because I already sized up my axe. So that's why I do the things I do. Okay, I'm just going to make sure it's kind of clipping the axe a little bit. And then now I'm going to get started with taking and putting a poly tube going all the way around here. Now to get started, I'm just going to go in here, go to bevel object and choose that circle. There we go. And I can move this down if I need to, and it starts clipping into the mesh. That's fine. If I go into edit mode, I can start manipulating this just like this. Notice how it, it's very hard because it wants to kink. Well, that's where the resolution comes in. And it also the ability to move these rocker arms just a little bit in so it doesn't happen. And there's a smoother transition between the two points. Just like that. Now, I warn you, this will take you some time. That's okay. You have all the time in the world. E on the keyboard. Will allow me to go like that. And you get rather fast at it. It's just, it takes a couple seconds to get used to it. And don't concentrate on it being so perfect at first because you're going to have to adjust it later anyway. Uh, sometimes you have to toggle between here and here, only because it's hard to grab the center point. Just like that. Okay, when you get far enough along, you can hit A, and then you can just auto handle it, and all of a sudden it looks, well, a thousand times better, right? So that's why I'm saying, don't get concentrating too much on detail at first. Uh, concentrate on getting it spiraling around, kind of looking like a rope. And we'll also concentrate on uh, lowering the resolution later too. Okay, when you got enough, uh, again, A, auto. I'll straighten them out for you. And maybe at this point, you know, do kind of make contact with the mesh. So I'm just kind of moving these. If you get too far ahead, I change my mind. 
Uh, if you get too far ahead, it becomes a, kind of a struggle to get all these placed correctly. And you're just looking for aesthetically pleasing kind of rope that looks like it's tightly wound. And if a rope is tightly wound, it mainly has a very tight coil. So just kind of move these around a little bit. I like to clip the mesh and then move back in. I also like pseudo realistic, so you know, at some point they would probably have tucked this in somewhere. So if I extrude this one and move it down, up, and then in, and then move the next point in. It kind of gives that tucked look like they would have just like that. So that's the beauty of this. You know, you can make it as realistic as you want. Again, this is uh, the premise of this is an aesthetically pleasing axe with a cool tightly wound handle. It's not game quality stuff. You know, this might be too high res, but oh well. It'll make a nice showpiece for you. Okay, now do you want this tightly wound up here? Do you want it to intersect with your parts? Okay. So I just want to flatten this out right here so it looks more like it's going up against the part. There we go. And once I get it kind of looking good, I keep continuing to make this. At one point, I don't have to keep doing this. I could actually duplicate it and then mirror it over. But the more you do, the better it looks. And the faster you get at it, too. Okay, so the world's boringest video is me wrapping this with um, some kind of tubing. I'm going to keep wrapping until I get probably about right here. And then I'm going to squish it down and wrap it some more. And it's going to give that ultra tight look. Uh, basically, how that goes is I make this smaller. So, go in here, scale this down just a little bit. And you can see it's doing that to the rope itself. And then I could shrink this. And then grow this back out. So, making it a little bit more wound looking. Very cool. Okay, well, this is going to get very boring very quickly. So, you know, this is just me wrapping this around. And join me in the next video where I have it to about right here. And then we can stop and then look at ways of we can duplicate this down and we don't have to keep doing it. All right. So maybe in the next video.